seeing my grandfather's movie finally made is almost a miracle. The studio had originally optioned the picture over 50 years ago. In fact, they were originally going to do it uh, as a Tony Curtis film. Tony Curtis was quite a big movie star when we were kids. It all seemed very exciting to both of us. And, um, and then, you know, it just sort of went away. The story of getting a broken maid really does begin again in 1998 when we was able to set up the project at Universal. But for the first four years, we did not have a director the studio would say yes to. Basically, the project became abandoned again. I realized, wow, this has been, this has been shelved for decades. I wonder if this is ever going to happen. I first came across Louis' story while I was researching Seabiscuit, which was my first book subject, and I got an original clipping about Seabiscuit from, I think it was 1938. I turned it over, and on the back there was an article about a running phenom named Louis Zamperini. And over the course of working on Seabiscuit, I came across other things about Louis' life, about his experience in the war. And I was really fascinated. And once I was done with Seabiscuit, I looked him up, I wrote him a letter, he called me, we had a wonderful conversation, and I knew right away this was what I wanted to write about for my next book. Dad said, well, if you want to try it, go ahead, and I'll send you my scrapbook and some photographs and stuff. He so, had no idea <laughs> what was going to no come idea. out of that. I ran all. out and got Seabiscuit <laughs> and read it, and I thought, oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Laura is one of the most astute historians, I think, ever. She did exhaustive research. It was a wonderful thrill to see how, how much Louis' story captivated the public, and I think that made him very happy because I think he felt his purpose in this world was to tell that story and to teach people how much they could survive. It read like a film. It was very cinematic to read. It's, it's a page turner. I thought, oh, we finally got a chance of ever going to, to film. When I came across Unbroken, I knew why so many people loved the book. And the reading of it even changed my life. The book's success was undeniable. It's been on the bestseller list for three plus years. It went on to become a phenomenon. I didn't know when I'd read the book whether or not he was still alive, and then found out he was. And I said, where does he live? And they said, strangely, he knows where you live because, because he's, he's above you. He lives above you. So we've lived near each other for years, and I always think it's this strange thing. I must have laid in bed so many times thinking, oh, yeah, what should I be doing? What is that thing? What is that thing you want to be a part of the world? You want to do more, and you want to be inspired, and where is that thing? And he's been right outside my window the whole time. I was so inspired by Louis' story. I decided I have to do this film. I had to fight for this job. I wasn't given this job. I had to fight really hard to get it and prove that I could do it because this is a big movie. The narrative arc of Louis' story is huge. You could, you could fill a feature-length film with his athletic career. You could fill one with his time on the raft. You could fill one with his time in prison camp and then his story of forgiveness after that. Fitting all of that into a two-hour film, that's not easy to pull off. And I could see how it would be a very daunting for anyone who's not just completely dedicated to it. Angelina, as a filmmaker, was exactly what the film needed to come alive. The camera's with you. Louis, he's been a part of the script, and he's been a part of the casting, and he's been a part of everything along the way. So I'm making sure that he approve of the choices we're making. Angelina, she's a great part of my life now, part of my family. I believe she will do a fabulous job with the movie.